I grew up in a world of privilege and power, attending elite private schools and then Princeton University. As a direct descendant of one of the founders of Procter & Gamble, I was groomed to be a leader in the establishment. But I chose a different path. I began to wake up when I was in elementary school. Adults were teaching me that the way to protect myself from a nuclear explosion was to duck under my desk and cover my head. That's when my serious questioning began. A couple of years later, I had a direct experience of universal energy. It happened one day when I was riding on a school bus, gazing out the window. I had a vision of a whirlpool pattern and I just knew that the flow of energy I was seeing was the same in an atom as in our entire solar system. I felt deeply that I, too, was somehow made of that same pattern. This vision was what originally got me into science, into trying to figure out how the universe works and how we humans fit into the overall pattern of life energy. Years later, I learned that the pattern I saw is known by some in the scientific world. It turns out that in 1921, Albert Einstein got a Nobel Prize for discovering that when energy is released in the universe, there are little packets of wholeness that emerge. This pattern actually tells us a lot about how life evolves. Considering the enduring wonders of creation throughout the universe and how unsustainable so many of our human systems are, I figured learning how the universe creates and sustains life would actually be quite useful. Each of these little packets of wholeness that Einstein discovered, called a quantum, is made out of its surroundings, but is distinct within it, like a whirlpool in water. These packets are always the same pattern, no matter what size, and they are surprisingly relevant to issues as seemingly disconnected as the wars in the Middle East, the global financial collapse, and how to achieve justice for everyone. We're about to explore how. Mathematicians call this pattern the torus. The energy in a torus flows in through one end, circulates around the center, and exits out the other side. It's balanced, self-regulating, and always whole. I was first officially introduced to the torus by scientist and inventor Arthur Young. Futurist Dwayne Elgin explains how the torus is the primary pattern that nature uses for life at every scale. Evolution means to, uh, to unfold, to roll out. So the question is, what is the universe rolling out? And what the universe is rolling out is self-organizing systems. And you can see this at every scale. A self-organizing system is a technical term for just uh, a system getting a hold of itself, uh, knowing itself, essentially. And uh, if we go to nature, uh, we, can, we can look at and we can see the self-organizing forms uh, throughout. We can see it in, in the cross-section of an orange, the cross-section uh, of an apple. We can see it uh, in the dynamic nature of a tornado. Uh, we can see it in the um, magnetic field around the Earth, a similar magnetic field around a, uh, an individual. We can see it in the structure of an entire whirlpool galaxy. Uh, we can see it in the structure uh, of, a, of a small atom. Uh, at every scale throughout its entire history, the universe has one single project. It's growing toruses. The universe is a torus growing factory. These toroidal dynamics are visible at various scales. One of them is at the galactic level, which are huge spinning structures with billions of stars in it. Looks like typically big arms of galaxies spinning around and they have vortices that goes from the center out to the edge of 
the galactic halo that surrounds them. Stars move from this galactic disk out to the halo, down the vortices, and back out again. Stars like Arcturus, for instance, we know, have done that path already. That's the appropriate description even for the atmosphere of our planet. The weather goes from the North Pole down to the equator and then back up, from the South Pole up to the equator and then back down. Even the dynamics on the surface of the Sun are very similar. Of course, here we're looking at it from an external perspective on a small scale model. When you look at the solar system embedded in the galaxy, embedded in the cluster, embedded in the supercluster, we're traveling in this boundless sea of infinite Taurus flow. The Taurus is like the breath of the universe. It's the form that the flow of energy takes at every scale of existence. But there's also an underlying structure in how the flow fits together, sort of like a skeleton. It's called the vector equilibrium, a term coined by one of the 20th century's greatest thinkers, Buckminster Fuller. Inspired by Fuller's visionary work, I spent decades researching the dynamics of the vector equilibrium and the torus. I became so excited by the potential of the toroidal energy form that in 1997, I co-founded a multidisciplinary think tank called the Sequoia Symposium to study the pattern and explore its applications. Our collected research convinced me that the torus and the vector equilibrium are primary patterns, fundamental to the creation of the universe at all scales. At the Sequoia Symposium gatherings, I learned of inventors who claimed they were using the torus dynamic as the basis for devices that generated energy without combustion. This revolutionary development, accessing what's sometimes called zero point or radiant or free energy, is now being called most simply new energy technology. Given that so much of the suffering in our world is the result of lack of access to energy, I realized that free, unlimited, clean energy would be one of the greatest breakthroughs in history. It could not just improve, but actually transform the quality of life on this planet. So I began to wonder who else knew about this pattern or about this powerful potential energy source. Some of the scientists at the symposium showed me how the Taurus has been encoded by different cultures for millennia. Apparently, ancient cultures had embedded this code in the most enduring forms then possible, in stories, in icons, in alphabets, and buildings. Here we are at one of the world's oldest sacred sites, the Osirian Temple at Abydos, Egypt. Very little writing is found in the Osirian Temple. However, there is one very significant piece of information in that temple. It is a very faint but clear and precise drawing. It's not etched into the rock, it's not carved, it's burnt into the atomic structure of the rock in some extraordinary way. Nassim has decoded the Osirian symbol in three dimensions. Since our world is not two-dimensional, it makes sense that codes relaying information about our world also wouldn't be limited to flat designs. His three-dimensional version of the Osirian symbol starts with the vector equilibrium, a perfectly balanced force field with 12 equal energy lines radiating out. They stabilize its center like the 12 spokes of a wheel. The primary pattern of balanced energy flow around this structure is the torus. Here we expand to the next larger scale, 
with a total of 64 pyramids called tetrahedra. If we then put spheres in, representing the toroidal energy field surrounding each of the pyramids, and then we drop away the pyramids, we end up with a matrix that is, amazingly, an exact overlay for the Osirian icon, a three-dimensional model of the same pattern that was burned into the rock wall of the Egyptian temple thousands of years ago. Now we travel across continents, from Egypt to China, where the same geometry appears at another sacred site built in 1420. Then you go to the Forbidden City, where the sun gods reside, and where you find at the entrance the foo dogs, the guardians of the knowledge. They guard the knowledge under their paw. The same geometry of 64 energy units is encoded again. I started wondering, is it just a coincidence that the exact same design appears in significant places on two different continents? But then Nassim showed me that this geometry of 64 is encoded time and again in cultures across the centuries and from all over the world. The Hebrew Kabbalistic Tree of Life creates the same structure we just saw with the vector equilibrium again embedded at every level. The ancient Chinese system of wisdom called the I Ching is based on 64 hexagrams, symbols with six lines in a set, some continuous, some broken. These can be put together as the six edges of a tetrahedron and together would form the 64 tetrahedron crystal. This same pattern shows up in modern scientific research. The double helix has an alphabet of 64 codons that are used to encode our human DNA.